Hey, welcome back to the Bible Reading Project. Today is Friday. You've made it a whole week with reading your Bible every single day. Zero excuse. Today we're reading Psalm 75. Um, while we do, I know why I won the Bible reading yesterday. Why is that? Because in Psalm 74, mm-hmm. we learned that dinosaurs and the Loch Ness Monster are real. They do exist. Mm-hmm. Or they did exist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Psalm 74 proves it, man. Loch Nessie yeah. is there. It's true. And uh, so congratulations, man. I just, again, yeah, thank you. Publicly, public, you are on a roll. Oh, yeah. You I'm went, if, if, if you were in a Christian school, you went from A level to E level. Yeah. Man, you were there. And uh, so, man, congratulations. Next week, another topic I want you to win. I was so happy. And I want to just say this, parents, right now, if you're a parent. Yeah. Right. And uh, yeah. you're raising children, young ones. How old? Maybe three to five, yeah, three like to you, nine, three to 18. Like, I want to give them organic yeah, let, Let's uh, parents, we want to give them something. Healthy. We want to drop some truth. Yeah. Um, because, you know, when you're raising a kid, right, mm-hmm. and they do something wrong, they flunk a test. Yeah. What do parents do? Hammer your cell phone. Right. You know, uh, you get caught doing something, hammer your cell phone. Go to your room. Go to your room. Well, we have something that I think will help. Way better. Way better. You agreed. Yes. I agreed uh, yesterday. I'm like, yeah, this is. Now, what we what we have is we have what's called a that's it bar. Yeah. T-H-A-T-S. I-T. It. That's it. It is super uh, nutritional, non, listen to this, non GMO. Yeah. No sugar added mm. hundred calories per bar. That means a pudgy kid could eat it and not even gain weight. But we want to tell you, stop parents, stop. And you just say, amen to this. Stop taking your children's phone. Amen. Stop sending them to their room when they disobey. Right. Amen. You make your child eat this. They will never again disobey you. Why? They will be right next to Jesus. Why behavior. will they never disobey them this if a parent is makes disgusting. their kid eat this? Disgusting. They wouldn't want to eat it. This is the most disgusting thing yeah. I have put in my mouth. Like like Johnny doesn't want to take out the trash. Okay. Go eat it. That's it, Bar. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh you oh, oh, you don't you don't want to put the phone away and oh, go to bed? Oh, that's it. Oh, that's it. Yeah, that's how it goes down. Yeah. Say something to me. Oh. Hey, uh, you're going to your room. Say something. Uh, no, I'm not. All right, all right. You're not the boss of me. All right, that's it. Oh, okay, I'm going to my room. You see, the moment you pull this piece of garbage out yeah. and you feed it to a child, yeah. they will be, at, and I'm not even joking. We banter, right? Yeah. We are bantering kings. <laughs> I, I have not one, I have not one <laughs> joke in my soul. It's just the most god awful thing it's a I have. I have ever. That's the real reason I, I have today. ever I put to, in my mouth. I didn't want to have to eat that. No, again. you ate it last I week, did. and you said it was horrible. Yeah, I did. laughed at you. <laughs> I was just like, it can't be that bad. You won, so whoever wins, the other one has to eat it. I literally yesterday when you were reading, I was having the internal gag <laughs> reef. Did you gag when you ate yes, it? I did. Yes, I was like gagging internally. Joey was watching me try to eat it. And I'm like, I can't even swallow it. <laughs> it's that horrible. So parents, look, it's a great a, a great opportunity. Your your kid talks back, you just go, that's it. That's it. You do that for about a month. Right. That child will bow down at your feet to right. never eat one of these. They will be next to and Jesus. And we're are we joking? No. We are not we are <laughs> not joking. It is horrible. I don't even know if I like that. Now I'm scared of trivia. <laughs> like I wonder if they'll sponsor us. I don't know. Like, God, I wouldn't want to be sponsored by them. That's so horrible. <laughs> like I, I don't even know who who packaged it. I don't here's what I want to ask. Who ate this and said that's a good idea and said let's and let's sell it yeah and somebody probably said that's it yeah hey let's <gasps> that's it and, and they decided to sell it so I dear Lord I'm gonna put it right there that's horrible we're reading Psalm 75 yeah, we so are. we're we're halfway done man Ooh. so uh, we're we're almost home mm-hmm. halfway home. Mm-hmm. So thank you for hanging out halfway. Psalm 75 today, it's just 10 verses long, so it's kind of short. I'm still kind of in the gag reflex of eating yesterday. Here we go. Psalm 75, we thank you, O God. Mm -hmm. We give thanks because you are near. People everywhere tell of your wonderful deeds. God says, at the time I have planned, I will bring justice against the wicked. When the earth quakes and its people live in turmoil, I am the one who keeps its foundations firm. I warned the proud, stop your boasting. I told the wicked, don't raise your fist. 
Don't raise your fists in defiance at the heavens or speak in such arrogance. For no one on earth from east or west or even from the wilderness should raise a defiant fist. It's God alone who judges. He decides who will rise and who will fall. For the Lord holds a cup in his hand that is full of foaming wine mixed with spices. He pours out that wine in judgment, and all the wicked must drink it, draining it to the dregs. But as for me, I will always proclaim what God has done. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. For God says, I will break the strength of the wicked, but I will increase the power of the godly. Amen. I want to just talk about judgment. Okay. You always hear all the time, hey man, you, no, don't judge me. You, right. you can't judge me. Don't yeah. judge me. Only God can judge me. Yeah. Um, do you believe in judgment? Do you believe God is going to judge us? Yes. How do you think that goes? And what is he? Because here's the here's the reality. Some people teach that Jesus died, right? Mm-hmm. And Jesus took all of our sin. Then why would God judge me if Jesus took my sin? Mm-hmm. Why? Why? Mm-hmm. If uh, Jesus has already died and took all of God's anger and judgment, and, mm-hmm. and then why would God punish me just because I don't believe that? I don't believe in Jesus. But if Jesus took all of that, yeah, then why would I still be punished? Because there's some people that don't believe there's a hell. Yeah. There's some people that don't believe that God would ever do that to anybody. Right. There's a lot of people that teach Jesus took the punishment for sin, yeah. and you're forgiven. Yeah, that's funny. I, you know, I've really been pondering that the last two days. Um, this idea of, um, well, the perspective I've been coming at it with is maybe not judgment, but um, the condition of God's love. Mm-hmm. And I think we can land on that it's unconditional there to how he loves is no conditions. Mm -hmm. But um, when you come into his kingdom, it's similar to that of living in as a parent, having a kid in your house Mm -hmm. that when you live in this house, there is a standard that you live by. Mm -hmm. If you don't live by that standard, I still love you, Mm -hmm. but you're just going to have to go live that standard out somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think the same thing is true for God. For his kids, you can come in when you come into the kingdom. You come in through this gate. Mm -hmm. The gate is Jesus. Okay, and once you're in it, Mm -hmm. there's a standard in which you live. Okay, I love you if you're on this side of the kingdom or you're outside the gates of the kingdom. Okay, I love you no matter what. Mm -hmm. But when you come and you live here, there is a standard in which you live by. Okay, and I think that's the judgment. The judgment is: Have you entered in through the gate? And the gate is Jesus. Okay, and then once you live in here, the judgment. The next judgment is. Have you lived up to the standard? So then, in that in that belief that Jesus is the gate, mm-hmm. right to get in, yeah. in that belief, Jesus didn't forgive the sins of the world. He only forgave the sins of the people that go through the gate, right? Because if your sins are forgiven, mm-hmm. why would He judge me? Yeah. If if Jesus died for the sins of the world, yeah, then my sins are forgiven whether I go through the gate or not. That's what people fight. Yeah, I'm forgiven. Yeah, if Jesus died on a cross, forgave the world. I'm forgiven. I don't even need to believe in him. Yeah. I'm already forgiven because right. he died for my right, sins. Right, right. I don't need to go through the gate. Mm-hmm. That may be for a better life here on earth, but for eternal life, that's what they te- many teach. That, you know, I don't say many, but there's a, a, a stream of yeah. Christian theology that teaches that, that Jesus died for all of us. In other words, everybody's saved. Yeah. It's the universalism concept. We're all saved because of Jesus. If you live it down here, you just may have a better life, a better pleasure to God. Mm. But if you don't, when you die, you go up there and God's like, yeah, you're forgiven. You were already forgiven. I forgave you in Christ. What's your thought on that? I think that there has to be a personal recognition. Okay, why? submission to it. Why? Um, Because uh, it's a good question. Why do I need a personal recognition to it? Can I give my answer? Yeah, of course. All right. Well... Because I, I did the same thing, man, uh, years ago. Mm-hmm. When 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 I started hearing of a teaching that said Jesus died for the world and Jesus took the sins of the world upon himself mm-hmm. and Jesus took the punishment of the entire world upon himself. And if he did that, it doesn't matter if you believe in him or not, mm-hmm. you're saved because his death saved you. Right. There was another stream that said his death saved you but you better confess him as Lord or you'll die and go to hell, mm-hmm. right? Which is what 
Christianity 101, you must confess his lordship. Mm -hmm. So then there was this dichotomy, well, well, if he died for the sins of the world and my sins are on his back, I should be forgiven where I confess him or not. But then there's another stream of Christianity that says, well, you must confess him. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you'll never be forgiven. And I'm like, well, how could I not be forgiven if I'm forgiven when he died on a cross? So it really bothered me. Like I'm like, oh, God, I need a good answer. You know, Help me, God. So I, I did some digging and praying and thinking and researching. Here's what I've landed on. I'll make the comment, and then I'll let you, you know, kind of give your your thoughts on it. All right, so here's the thinking. Jesus, did he or did he not die for the sins of the world? He did. Is everybody forgiven? Yes. All of us, right? Right. The worst of the best, we're all forgiven because of the death of Christ. Right. But do you believe that some will still be punished and go to a lake of fire? Yes. Even though they're all forgiven? Right. Okay. That's biblical Christianity 101. Right. Well, so that bothered me so much. I went back to, well, if Jesus had to die, right? Mm -hmm. He had to take a punishment. I wanted to go back to the book of Genesis and say, well, then what does his death going to to fix? There has to be something broken for his death to remedy the problem, right? right? For for him to come and remedy the problem, there had to be a problem. So I went back to the original problem, which was what? Adam and Eve, right? Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve sinned. Well, when Adam and Eve sinned, it brought sin on humanity. Yep. So once there's a sin, mm-hmm. what what has to happen with Jesus? There has to be the remedy to the sin. Yep. So if there's a remedy to the sin, there had to be a problem to the sin, yeah. right? So the remedy Jesus is the answer to the problem, Adam. The remedy of Jesus is the answer to the results of Adam's sin. Right. So I went back to Adam and I found two things that distinctly happened with Adam's sin. First off, shame. Yeah. The moment he sinned, they tried to cover their shame, nakedness, right. and they ran and hid in a bunch of trees from God. Yeah. That is classic shame 101. Yeah, right. Classic shame 101 is you better hide from God. He's going to nuke you because you're <laughs> a miserable, terrible human, and you have failed him royally. Yeah, right. Agree with that? Yes. Second problem that happened with Adam and Eve's sin is they became guilty. Now, the guilty of their sin was, you're going to die, Mm -hmm. right? How did God remedy the guilt of their sin? He came down, he killed an animal, and he made animal skins. He sacrificed the blood of an animal and made skins to cover their nakedness. 932 years later, what happened to Adam? He died. He died. died. So God kept his word. Mm -hmm. If you sin, you die, because the, the, the punishment of sin is to die. Yep. Okay? Right. The only remedy for the punishment of a guiltiness to die is blood. Mm-hmm. That's what was established, right? Right, right? But what was the establishment of the shame? God said, "Where are you? Come here. I want to come here. I want to talk to you. Come out from the trees. Yeah. Let's chat." Right, right. right? So, first thing God's got to do, now if that's the problem, the problem is shame. Mm-hmm. You're hiding in the trees because you feel terrible for who you are. And the other is guilt. Mm-hmm. And the guilt has to be, to get forgiveness, has to be to the blood. Mm-hmm. So Jesus, when he dies, has to remedy these two things. Right. The first thing he remedies is what? Shame. Shame. The moment Jesus Christ dies for the sins of the world, mm-hmm. there's zero shame. Yeah. He says, I forgive you. Come out from the trees. Stop hiding. Mm-hmm. Stop thinking I'm going to kill you. Stop thinking that I hate you. I don't hate you. I love you. Come out from the trees. That's the cross. The cross in itself forgave me of all of my shame, all of my stupidity, all of my sins, everything. He says, no more shame on you. My death took your shame away. So now here I'm out from the trees, right? The whole world is now out from among the trees. God looks at the whole world and says, none of them, I see in shame. Mm -hmm. The shame that's on their life, I put on my son. Mm -hmm. So as perverted as you may be, all of your perversion is put on my son. But what's the second thing he has to remedy? Guilt. Guilt. Everybody still on the planet that already has shame removed is still guilty. Yeah. Guilty of what? Of their sin. We're going to die. Yeah. Because the the result of sin is death, right? So now Jesus says, Ryan, because there's no more shame. I don't hold anything against you. You come to me, all you who are weary. Mm -hmm. But then he says this, the shame, watch, 
My death on the cross removed your shame. You didn't even have to ask me for it. Right. It's free. Yeah. Cost you nothing. Right. But if you want the guilt of your sin removed, Mm -hmm. you must confess me as Lord. Mm -hmm. And until you confess me as Lord, you're forever guilty. Yeah. This is why people say, well, how could God send good people to hell? Right? It's not that he sends good people to hell. It's that all these people that have no more shame on them Mm -hmm. have stood in front of him, and he gives them a chance to believe, and they say, no, peace out, man. I don't believe in you. And he says, well, if you don't believe in me, because I've given you every freedom to, Mm -hmm. there's no reason for you to run from me. Right. But if you don't believe in me, I have to honor my nature. Yes. You're going to die in sin. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. The shame has been removed at the cross. The guilt is removed at the confession. Yeah. So that's kind of the way I teach it now. Shame is removed at the cross, Mm -hmm. free to you. Mm -hmm. Guilt is removed at your confession. Right. You must confess his lordship to be saved. That's good. So that's kind of how I worked out. Jesus died for the whole world, yeah. and the sins of the world have been forgiven, meaning there's no more shame. But the sins of the of the shame are forgiven, but the only way the guilt can be eradicated, you must confess his lordship. Mm-hmm. Why? Because back here, guilt was eradicated with blood, mm-hmm. and here, guilt is eradicated with blood. Mm-hmm. When I see that sacrifice and go apply that sacrifice to my life, that is confession, right? I right. confess him as Lord right. is the same as God placing the blood on Adam yeah. and the animal skin. The moment I say Jesus is Lord, I place his life on my life, right. and now I get eternal life. Right, and I think right. that's how we balance it out. I think that's how we balance out why it's so important to make a public profession of Christ Jesus because you are putting on Him, his self mm-hmm. into your life so that his death and blood absolves you from the guilt yeah. of dying, right? not just the shame of dying. That's good. So, yeah. Got a thought on that? Amen. Yeah, well, when Jesus, to further what you're saying, that to uh, relieve humanity of shame, when he's hanging from the cross, one of the sayings that he says is, Father, forgive them, for they know what, not what they do, that, mm-hmm. that he's asking God to forgive them of the shame that they would feel mm-hmm. as soon as the Spirit is is released from his body mm-hmm. and that the the shame of oh my gosh mm-hmm. i realize now what we've done with the earthquake and the splitting of mm-hmm. the veil and um and all of that that uh well we really messed up that but the forgiveness of of that right there yeah the, and, and that's it on the cross on the cross shame is adult yeah. god forgive them all but then there's the confession after his resurrection oh he's lord yeah. and then there goes the guilt and right. there there comes the eternal life that's good so. and just uh, you know just as a reminder that one of the sayings on the cross was not shame on you right it was shame off of you yeah that's awesome man hey thank you for hanging out with us thank you for a great week again for winning to beth and remember parents that that's it bar that's it. totally revolutionized the life of your disobedient child <laughs> we love you we hope you have a great weekend we'll see you monday